I was just in Nebraska two days ago, and there's this thing called corn sweat. Have you ever heard of it? Sweaty corn. It's a big deal. Maybe you've never heard of it, but I'll let you know what's going on here. Corn, as the temperature goes up, takes water from the earth and cools itself down in order to stay alive during the hot months of July and also August. Soy does the same thing. It takes the it takes the moisture from the earth and it cools itself down and then turns it into vapor, which makes it hella humid. And we're growing more and more corn in America because global warming allows us to. It used to be up north, you really couldn't grow too much corn, which is why in Canada, rye whiskey is more more popular than something closer to corn ma- corn mash or uh, like bourbon. You have rye whiskey because you can't grow corn up there, but now you can, thanks to global warming. But that means more and more corn means more and more humidity. 40% of the corn is going to ethanol. We put it in our cars. Why? Because gasoline is bad for the environment and our cars can still run on 10% ethanol. 10% gives you a higher octane and and helps reduce engine knock. It makes your engine a little quieter, makes it more fuel efficient. and, And also it burns cleaner. So you have less just crap in the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? So we put ethanol. Ethanol generally does come from corn, though ethanol can come from anything. You drink it. It's in your beer. It comes from whatever. It's fermentation, okay? Anyway, so we're growing more corn for ethanol because we want cleaner fuel. So 40% of our corn in America goes to that. About 40% of it goes to feed for aminals. All the animals who are alive in America today, most of them eat corn. Almost all of them are eating corn. We love feeding animals corn. Yeah, it kills them, we know, but they're not supposed to live long anyway. We're going to slit their throats. So we give them all the corn we can to fatten them up. So then, and also, you you could lump in soy on this too, but uh, soy is a a little bit different. Corn is the the big issue on this one. So then only about 10% actually is something that humans will eat and the other 10% is going to like make plastics and paper products and things like that. We actually eat a very small percentage. When you're out there seeing all that corn out in the American prairie, you can just wonder, well, 40%, almost half of this is going to feed animals and almost half of this is going to ethanol production. This is out of this world. There's clearly a problem. And you know what the problem is for you, me, and anyone living in America is the heat wave <laughs> right now. It's so humid in the middle of this country that people are dropping over dead. It's hot and humid because of the corn. I keep on saying that, you know, uh, things about this global warming thing, we're going to have surprises all around us. And this is one of those situations where I can't even believe, I, I can't, I didn't think that corn was going to make humidity, humidity, <laughs> and a humidity epidemic. Look at this port. Look at this beautiful corn. I love corn. Don't you? All right. Hallmark of Midwestern summer might be growing stickier thanks to climate change and the steady march of industrial agriculture. Climate change is driving warmer temperatures and warmer nights and allowing the atmosphere to hold more moisture. (gasps) It's also changed growing conditions, allowing farmers to plant corn further north and increasing the total amount of corn in the United States. You thought we were going to grow less corn? No, man, we're growing more corn. We're growing more. You guys keep on eating those Chick-fil-A those Chick-fil-A's and McDonald's hamburgers, you're gonna, we're gonna grow more corn for you because you gotta, if you're gonna keep eating animals, we're gonna keep growing corn. That's just how it is. You're gonna keep driving more cars. We're gonna keep making more corn, especially noticeable in the Midwest because so much corn is grown there and it all reaches the stage of evapotranspiration. That's a fun word, isn't it? Evapotranspiration. At around the same time, so you get that real surge there and it's noticeable. Mm-hmm. 
I was just there. Let me tell you, it's noticeable. He said soybeans tend to produce more vapor than corn in August. Well, I don't know about all that. I mean, I'm in the middle of August, and it was hella, it was hella hot and humid over there. And, uh, and the lady at the visitor center was even saying, like, holy crap, this is worse than usual. Like, usually by now it's a little cooler. Mm-mm. <laughs> The thing that I also worry about, look at listen to this ominous thing. He said corn does most of its evapotranspiration, the process of drawing water up from the soil, using it for its needs, then releasing it to air in July. Okay. <clears throat> if if the corn is drawing all of the water and minerals up from the soil, doesn't that mean it's contributing to soil degradation, which is one of the leading the leading fears in the world today that as we degrade our soils we'll have massive famines is it that i feel like they're related i'm no chemist but i want to say that as the water is pulled up from the earth minerals come with it and you get soil degradation I have a feeling that that's exactly – today, Toadie said more study is necessary to understand how climate change will shape corn sweat, saying rainfall, crop variety, and growing methods can all play a part. What do you think? Do you think that we should uh, maybe grow less corn, think of something else? Maybe Maybe we should stop – killing all these animals and we won't have to feed them all this corn. That, may, that would make sense, I think. I think so. Asked whether or not – whether more corn sweat is an effect of climate change, he simply said, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a climate change thing. Yes. Yes, this is the answer. It shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that it's been getting hotter and as a result of it getting hotter, plants are losing more water. There you go. There you go, you corny bastard. Look, <laughs> the world <laughs> – the world is getting sweatier. Of course it is. It's getting sweatier. It's getting sweatier and sweatier. And because um, the stories that I want to talk about today, let's take a little, let's take a little intermezzo, will we? <laughs> let's take a little intermezzo. Don't forget to upvote this amazing guy. Thank you, Johnny Vegan Seed. Thank you. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 2 million subscribers, everybody. We're trying to get to 2 million. Please hit that subscribe button. Thank you for being here, Johnny Vegan Seed. Maybe we should maybe force companies to switch their fleet to electric to drive prices down. That'd be great. But the thing is, you know it's not transportation, right? It's because if you think about it, what's easier to get rid of? Eating animals or transportation? Like you have to get rid of one. Which one should it be? Because you might be able to get electric cars, but you can't get electric planes yet. We're so far away from electric planes. So what do you think we're going to do? We put ethanol on electric planes too. And to, by the way, this is only about 10% of, of these, these engines only run at about 10% of ethanol. The rest is you know, petrochemicals. So you're screwed. <laughs> like We have to stop feeding animals our crops like soil degradation this corn sweat thing all of the all of the methane going into the air because of ruminating animals it's clearly a problem not to mention bird flu <laughs> 